So I'm Jainal Ahmed. I am flying all the way from India to deliver this. Uh, my co-speaker, Rohit, he couldn't travel because of visa issues. Uh, I am an AI architect and a cloud architect at a uh, health and safety company called Navatech Group. And Rohit is a CNCF ambassador and also uh, I think developer relations manager at Cepros. Uh, so today we'll be talking around how do you uh, scale LLMs, uh, deploy them efficiently and quickly, right? Uh, uh, okay. I think we all agree to this, right? You know, LLMs today are everywhere, right? Every product that we see, see today, everything that I've been using uh, for quite some time has an LLM flavor to it, right? Some feature has been powered by LLM. And uh, this has been the rise of LLMs, right? I think, right, from uh, pre-2020 with the rise of Transformers and BERT to today where we have Falcon 180B or even, you know, Access Grok 340B, uh, models, right, which are there. And as the rise of these models, it is difficult for us as an ML engineers to keep up with the systems, deploy them, make sure that these go out, out to our hands of the users fast and they work, right? Uh, the potential challenges, I think, uh, uh, things around uh, the computational resources that is required, right, both for training, inference, it leads to a high inference cost, high infrastructure cost, both for managing, right? Uh, scaling up with GPUs with hard you know, ML engineers here, no, you know, while scaling up with CPUs is easier. It's because you know, also because it's easy to get uh, like hold of those machines, right? Versus the GPU instances. Uh, all of these models have a very high uh, latency uh, because LLMs are sequential in nature, right? To generate and let's say a sentence of 512 uh, uh, words, you need to iterate 512 times, right? So it's Per token, you are just adding to the latency of it. Uh, LLMs are large in size. We have seen, you know, we have models around 180B or 340 B uh, uh, parameters, and because of that, it impacts on the infrastructure, impacts on the latency, and impacts on speed, right? And all of these models have also high uh, like memory requirements. And I think I don't need to reiterate this again, uh, but I think in the in a previous talk around. Uh, GPT-4, Kate, uh, et cetera, right? Uh, I think the speaker said, uh, in ML, Kubernetes has become more like a choice and it's not a de facto platform, right? which is where we are moving. I think the ecosystem or the all ML engineers are moving to adopt Kubernetes to deploy these models. Uh, I think the good thing that Kubernetes brings to us, and as ML engineers, I think we are not used to this, right? We're used to writing on a Jupyter notebook, building our models and be, be done with it, right? Uh, Scalability of the ML workloads, uh, optimized resource allocations, I think a good thing that comes to us. Uh, you know, platform agnostic, uh, often a time these models, the, the ML engineers build them on their machines or, or on some other cloud platform, but with the scarcity of GPUs, you need to uh, move to various clouds uh, quickly wherever you get the GPU, right, which is where the platform agnostic part comes very handy. And uh, with, uh, you know, fault tolerance and uh, self-healing capabilities, the reliability also comes onto the platform, right? But all these are good things, but when you, and okay, before I go to that, I think this is a quote from uh, Christopher Berner, which, and, and this session was uh, delivered back in uh, KubeCon EU or 2007, or like 17, where they mentioned, I think all the infra is on Kubernetes and it scales up to 10 to 50X on the infrastructure, right? And gives a lot of uh, flexibility to the developers to quickly experiment and deploy their ML models. Uh, and this might be a typical architecture that you might have seen or is are seeing across uh, any platform, right? So at the end, you have the user, uh, end users who talk to uh, the client API, let's say chat GPT or any, any LLM powered application that you build, right? And uh, on, on our side, we have, let's say, Qflow, where you have these models deployed, uh, and these models are deployed on the web using KSERV or any, any other things, right? But uh, when you talk about this, right, it is not as simple as how it looks, right? I think the current experience, if you talk about from a developer perspective, you know, downloading those models, large models, right? These are 200 to 400 GB size of models we need to download with expensive memory requirements, long wait times to load the models. Think about a uh, you know, upscaling scenario where you need to uh, upscale within milliseconds, right? But then you need to download these large models and that takes up a lot of latency just to load the model and, and provision it. Then uh, the next step that comes to, you know, in the life cycle and currently, uh, even if you have to use Qflow, right? You need to create a container file, you need to optimize the models, reduce those model files, convert them and create a container and then push them to a container registry, right? 
on top of that, you host the model, provision necessary GPU infrastructure, may it be a, a standalone machine or let's say in a cluster. And then finally, like set up the inference server on top of that, which serves the API endpoint and then all your uh, applications talk to it, right? And then troubleshoot any shared GPU cuckoo, like quota limitations, uh, even if you on uh, how do you scale and all those things, right? All these things are disjoint, right? All these things are one of that you need to do every time repeatedly whenever you have to deploy the model, right? And this takes several weeks, right? And if you see in the survey, uh, you know, a lot of surveys talk about 90% of ML uh, today LLM, uh, projects don't go to production just because of this, right? It takes a lot of time for you to uh, make sure you have a model which works, but now pushing from then from, let's say, staging to prod takes a lot of time, right? Uh, enters Q Kaito, right? It's a Kubernetes AI uh, toolchain operator. It's having three weeks old. It's announced very recently. Uh, what it does is it automates the LLM inference on Kubernetes, right, across GPUs and CPUs. So think about a scenario where you have a model which doesn't need a lot of compute. It can run on the CPU at the same time. It can also share the same GPU across multiple models, which can, uh, you know, let's say you have one GPU, one large GPU, so that large GPU can be shared across multiple smaller models, and those can run efficiently on the same platform, right? So it selects optimally sized infrastructure for the model. So whenever you declare the model, you just give uh, the requirements on what this model needs. And basis on that, it selects the right infra and then deploys it for you, right? So it easily splits inference across multiple lower GPU cons. Let's say you have a model, uh, model that needs A100, right? But you don't get A100 from a cloud provider. You can still run the same model on, an L on a cluster of L4 GPUs where you are you know, running the model in a distributed fashion. So eliminates wait time for higher GPU con VMs. Uh, it also provides you these presets model servers or model images. So all you have to do is just uh, choose the preset, uh, preset image and uh, deploy that, which will eventually deploy your model into the cluster, right? So Kaito has two major components. Uh, one is the GPU provisional controller. So it uses a machine uh, in the custom resource uh, definition. It's originated from Carpenter. Interact with the workspace controller to add new GPU nodes into the cluster whenever required, right? So in an up upscaling scenario, if you need to upscale, it adds that resource back into the cluster and upscales it. And then you have a workspace controller, right? So which reconciles all these CRDs, triggers auto node provisioning, and does all the management work for you. Uh, so the architecture looks something like this. So in, in the core, you have that uh, API server where your API workload is running, right? and you have your CRDs written for each model, each preset which is available to you. So whenever you apply that CRD, uh, the works per, uh, workspace controller talks to the node provision, uh, provisioner, provisions in node, uh, and then deploys the model into that uh, available cluster. Uh, yeah, so right now, I think of the box, it supports deployment of open source LLMs like Falcon, Llama 2, I think Phi 2, Orca, which are currently uh, available out of the box. Uh, it, you know, you can create your own containers, which it also comes with an HTTP server, so you don't have to do anything uh, in terms of how do you now talk to that model. Uh, you avoid uh, tuning of deployment parameters. So I think every one of you know when you need to deploy a model, you need to do a guess game of, okay, is this the right infrastructure for my model, right? Is the right GPU, is this my right setup for the model? And can it uh, fit or this can, uh, the infra that I have uh, fit the model that I have, right? So all this guessing game is avoided, uh, you know, removed, right? Uh, auto provisioning of the GPU nodes. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you a YAML configuration where you just have to define, okay, this is a requirement and you need provisions for you, deploys the model, right? And then you host uh, all the large models in a public registry, if a license allowed. Uh, so the key benefits, I think, uh, so reduced cost because, I think first is the reduced cost because now that you can split the same infra across or, or the same model across multiple smaller instances that are available to you. So hence, you don't uh, pay those higher end GPU nodes, but you pay to a cluster of smaller nodes, which is still, uh, is good enough to run your models, right? So it supports a lot of open source SLMs, LLMs. Uh, you get uh, fine grained control over the cluster, over the models that you are deploying. Uh, and, and on top of that, you have network and data security for you to ensure that 
uh, your data is never leaves the like Kubernetes cluster and your data is always secure. Uh, yeah, so this is, a, uh, this is the only YAML that you need to write in order to deploy, right? Once you uh, deploy, let's say, Kaito and, and uh, enable it on your cluster, all you have to do is write, just write this YAML file. So first is you give a workspace name. Uh, second, the GPU type or that's the instance that you need to use and some uh, presets, right? Which presets uh, you want to use for this model. Uh, yeah, so if I need to, I just, if I summarize the entire experience, uh, you st the currently, these are the steps you need to do, right? You do an environment setup, you do a model setup, containerize it, and finally deploy. All gets boiled into just deploy a Kaito on your Kubernetes, apply the CRD, and it's done for you, right? Your entire model is deployed for you. It's available as an HTTP endpoint for you to talk to and uh, generate responses. Uh, yeah, so at the core, let's say you have your model weights, model containers, host image, and provision infra, right? On, in, in between your model, uh, Kaito sits. It's, it allows you to deploy your model, inference, uh, train your model on top of this, you know, it, and I think, uh, so your whole infra workspace setup for a model inferencing is done in a matter of minutes instead of uh, weeks, which it used to take earlier. Uh, quickly, we'll go to demo. I think uh, while Rohit was supposed to do this, we have a recorded session. I'm working as a development manager at Subos, and we are simplifying the developer's life uh, for like authorization as service kind of thing. But today's topic is more around the Kaito, which is, I guess, you already learned from the channel, like what it actually does and stuff. But I would like to show you in the demo, like what, uh, how you can set it up. So Kaito is nothing but Kubernetes AI tool chain operator. So we today are going to dive into uh, like how Kaito simplifies the development of large scale AI machine learning models, like Falcon, which is one of the example in a Kubernetes environment. I will use the uh, AKS for that. Uh, so without wasting time, let's understand uh, what how we can do this. So if I go here, you will see uh, uh, it is talking about this uh, this website. You can go and check it out, like <clears throat> how to do the stuff. So yeah, yeah, we can see like uh, how actually you can set up the Kai2 to automate AML model and uh, how you can manage large model files and uh, how you can set the configurations, auto provision GPUs and uh, do lots of stuff, right? But uh, there is some prerequisite you should uh, take in care, like uh, uh, you have you should have Azure subscription, you should have Azure CI install, you can set up uh, Like uh, how actually description you should have also CI install. You can set up uh, the things uh, like Kubernetes concept and all you know. You should know that. Then we will set up the uh, AKS cluster and you will understand that. So today we are going to set up the Kubernetes uh, uh, this cluster and enable the AI toolchain operator add-on inside that. So how we can do that, that is here yeah, we will talk about like a guess cluster and enabling the Kaito add-on. So uh, let's go into that. You, you will see uh, like we have to go with this process. But first I would like to show you one of the example which is Kaito uh, workspace file called BYML which you can go and directly check it out. So it is simple, you don't have to do a lot of things here. So it is saying like API version, uh, which is V1 alpha of Kato. And uh, here we will also talk about the workspace, which is Falcon 7D. The instance type is standard and CS, which is like provided by Microsoft for the uh, AI ML workloads, where you can use the GPU. So uh, like, you can spend the money for the GPUs because today everything is on AI and uh, GPUs is one of the least thing we should care about. <laughs> and then there is uh, uh, like match labels where you can label the key value things and all. And then uh, preset is where we will configure the Falcon 7 v So let's dive into uh, our today's demo. So 
as you can see, you know, so we are running the Azure feature registry uh, done. Then we can move forward with today's installment of the, uh, what we say, register of, like, we are just doing the namespace register here. Now let's move to the next step, which is I will use here. Uh, it will take like a lot of time. Yeah, it started running forward slowly. Yeah, you see it is creating the cluster. See, it is done now. You will see like uh, uh, it's done that, and now you can set new things here, uh, which was mentioned. Then it's like cluster created with the things, but now I'm using the uh, AKS update for the get credentials and stuff. Uh, also, like uh, it will help me to uh, do the identity and things. So that's uh, it is done. Is ready and now let's move forward. Uh, let's check like uh, principal ID, uh, identity, MC resource group, and lot. Slowly up, you will see like I have yeah, uh, will OIDC issue here, and it is helping me for the then principal ID. Or role, resource group, role definition ID, which is one of the important thing if you are working towards identity and stuff. Yeah, it is running, and we can see uh, it will connect. Yeah, it is created, uh, named as a kind of edited identity, verified by running your deployment. And running file, it just now to can clear, uh, verify your deployment and stuff. Uh, it is, it just have to run the command, get deployments. That we now host, which is this Falcon 7B model. And so we're gonna use Yeah, so once you have, uh, let's say the cluster uh, deployed with Kaito enabled, all you have to do is just, uh, and there are presets available for all the models that it supports. You write this YAML, you, you know, do an KFCTL apply to the cluster. And once it's applied, it'll, just, it'll give you an uh, endpoint, right, which you can now talk to the model. So it's just a workspace ID slash chat. Uh, you, again, write one more YAML for, for your uh, let's say AI service now to talk to uh, this cluster. Once you do that, uh, you know, once you create this uh, yeah. and do a KFCTL apply, you'll see uh, this AI service on your, on your cluster will spin up uh, and and then finally, you'll see your uh, model endpoint being generated, right? Uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you can uh, actually go to these resources, the GitHub repo, and there's a video tutorial of entire deployment and inference. The slides are here, the links are available for you to quickly uh, go through the doc documentation, the workshop, and the video tutorial for you to go through, understand how Kaito works, how you can access uh, or how you can use it on, with your infra to deploy this model site. Right? Just to summarize the entire uh, agenda today, so we had Kaito, which can uh, streamline your uh, overall uh, ML deployments with custom CRDs. Uh, it's an, it provides an efficient workflow to quickly deploy and host your models, and it does hold your uh, GPU uh, provisioning and, and in, uh, influencing on like automated way. I think that's all. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you again. Uh, and I think uh, any questions we can take. Yeah. I can. One, two, three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so uh, my question is: uh, Let's consider I have my fine-tuned llama with my own, like my own fine-tuned llama. How can I deploy it uh, using uh, Kato? What, what uh, steps should I do? So uh, if you go to the GitHub, right? There's, so all you have to do is uh, in the so in the in the YAML configuration, I'll uh, show you right. Uh, 
So all you do is, uh, I think, Uh, so you have to create that Docker container, uh, which links to your talks to. So right now, this talks to that's a hugging face hostel models, right? Instead, you just point to your models, oh, okay. and then once you deploy it, it pulls your model from there and spins up and gives you the endpoint. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hi. Um, Hi. Yeah, actually, I have a question. Does it support on-prem clusters as well as on-prem cloud, like something like OpenStack instead of... Right now, it only supports AKS, uh, but I think the roadmap is that uh, it, uh, like, to make it sure that it, it is cloud agnostic and it, it runs everywhere. Okay, and uh, this is going to be soon, or...? I think I, I spoke to some of the code developers. I think it is soon, uh, and an on-prem should also work, yeah. Okay. Because right now, what it does is uh, the node provisioner is only configured to talk to AKS, right? You just, or if you want, you can just extend it and make, make sure that, you, know, you create that adapter which can talk to your on-prem or let's say, like other cards. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have time? Uh, for the model from, from model storage or like a, uh, where do you store the model? Sorry? Where do you store the model? The models, uh, storage as in, uh, these are public models, right? These are pulled from the Hugging Face repository. Right, so downloading that model will take a long time, right? How do you, um, yeah, how do you like, uh, uh, are you like downloading uh, so, the yeah. hundreds so, of gig models? So let's like say for like models, models which Hugging are commonly Face. used, right? So you can create or download those models, make those, make those available in, in the container itself, right? The, yes, the container becomes a bit uh, large, but since, uh, it is also, let's say, on your uh, like repository, right? So instead of downloading the container uh, model and building the container, you just quickly you package everything all together into a current container and ship that. So you put the model into the container image. Yeah. yeah. So that will be like hundred gig like uh, image. Um, yes. So pulling that image will take a long time, also, right? Or like you cache it on the node. Like you can cache that. Okay. Great. Thank you.